This program is made possible in part by grant from Radio Shack, a division of Tandy Electronics Limited, Digital Equipment of Canada Limited, NABU Manufacturing Corporation, and the following companies. Patterns of life on the video screen. Images bright, flowing an endless stream. Bits of information, logic. To Bits and Bytes, a television series about computers, or rather about microcomputers, the small personal ones that are selling like hotcakes nowadays. I'm Luba Goy, and I'm going to be the presenter of the information about computers that's been prepared for us by the experts. And this is Billy Van, who's going to be himself, the average person who knows nothing about computers but wants to learn. Computers seem to have crept in everywhere, haven't they? Here are some familiar scenes. You can't get away from them. And how many of us really know how they work? Well, the best way to find out is just go up to the first little computer you see and switch it on. Okay. Huh. I'll warn you now, I'm not very good at math. Well, who says computers have anything to do with math? Yeah, but to compute means to do math, doesn't it? I mean, if it has nothing to do with math, why do we call them computers? Because the first people to use them happen to be mathematicians. But you can use them for anything you like. It's just that we're stuck with the name computer. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I better turn it on. The switch is at the back. Oh, really? Yeah, you're right. But why is it hidden? So that you don't switch the computer off by mistake. Now, that's very smart. What's this? 31,743 bytes free. What on earth is that? We'll come back to that in a minute. What matters now is that the computer is ready. Oh, um, when is it started? Is something wrong with it? Hey, do something. Come on. I'm afraid computers don't do anything on their own. You have to tell them precisely what to do step by step. You have to program them. Oh, wait a minute. I don't know how to program. You don't have to do the programming yourself. Beside you is a ready-made program you can feed into the computer. Oh, well, this is just an ordinary audio cassette. Yes, it is. And you can play it on that ordinary-looking audio cassette recorder that's already plugged into the computer. Oh, okay. So, do I press play? Not yet. First, you have to tell the computer to copy the program that's on the cassette into its own storage area or memory. How do I do that? Just type load, L-O-A-D. You've now finished your message, so you need to say over to you to the computer by pressing the return key. On other computers, you'll see a key marked enter, and that also means over to you. Oh, here it is. Return means over to you. Oh, and it says press play on tape one. Okay. May I? Go ahead. You'll have to wait now while the computer searches through the cassette for the first program. I thought these things are supposed to be fast. They are fast. It's the cassette that's slow. The poor old computer can only go through a cassette at normal playing speed. Uh. Ah, finally. 
what it's doing now is loading or copying the word game program into its memory. Now the program is loaded, but nothing's going to happen until you tell the computer to start obeying the instructions in that program. To do that, you tell the computer to run the program. Type run and then press return. Okay. R U N return. Scramble letters. Oh, it's a word game. Great. Okay. Press space bar. What is your name? Okay. My name is B I L L Y Billy. Good luck, Billy. You're really friendly, aren't they? Okay. What's my first word? It is C O L H O S. Call school. 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 Hey, I'm right. Okay. Second word is Gilco. G I L. Logic. It's logic. L O G I. Wait a minute. I'm going to spell this wrong. I want to see what the computer does. No, Billy, I'm afraid that's not it. Well, I quite agree with you. It should be L O G I. Where's the C? I got to take up typing too. There. Right. The third word. You know, this is something else. I can't believe that all this information, words and letters, can be contained in an ordinary audio cassette. Let me show you something. Take the cassette out of the recorder and listen to it on the regular cassette machine that's beside it. Ooh, wait a minute. That doesn't sound like what's on the screen here. No, it doesn't, because that's the sound of the binary code. And what's the binary code? Let's have a look. If you lift the lid of a computer, you will see a circuit board into which a number of little boxes have been plugged. Each box contains a chip, which consists of thousands of microscopic electric circuits, each of which can be either on or off. This is the only language that the computer understands. Is one of my circuits on or off? A sequence of several ons and offs in various combinations can represent any number or letter or graphic symbol. And we can symbolize these ons and offs by using a one to stand for on and a zero to stand for off. Most computers can represent any of the symbols on their keyboards by various combinations for a total of exactly eight ones and zeros. Since this language or code is based on two digits, one or zero, just as a bicycle is based on two wheels or a biplane is based on two pairs of wings, it is called the binary code from the Latin word binarius, meaning two together. And each of the ones and zeros is called a binary digit or bit for short. So it takes eight bits to represent any keyboard character. Such a group of eight bits is called a byte. One byte is the equivalent of one character. This computer can store or remember roughly 32,000 bytes. That means you can feed a program into it that uses up to 32,000 characters, letters, numbers, or graphic symbols. Just as a kilometer is a thousand meters and a kilogram is a thousand grams, so is a kilobyte roughly a thousand bytes. This computer, therefore, has a 32 kilobyte memory, or a 32K memory for short. But the memory of most small personal computers can be extended to at least double that, 64K. This may sound a lot, but it isn't. The average page of a book contains about 2,000 characters. It's a 2K page. So 